What's this? A demon! The demon we heard about? Sounds like it's having fun. Then we'll use this distraction. This was a place of worship for Amenoch, the Water Empyrean. The ancients built this sanctuary underwater for the same reason that Eumacia's temples were built underground. But building this underwater couldn't have been easy. Aye. With the Earth Temples, all they had to do was keep digging. Here, they had water to contend with. How did they do it? You can't split the sea like you can a log. They started by stacking giant stone blocks in the shallows, creating an enclosed space. Then they drained the water and expanded the enclosure. Once they had done that enough times and secured enough dry space, they were able to dig into the sea floor. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The humans believed that by going through such great hardships to build these temples, they could show the depth of their devotion. Additionally, current research suggests the site of this temple once sat on the seacoast. What? Are you saying I'm wrong? No, I'm only reporting what I've read in academic journals. How would coastal ruins sink into the ocean? When the Empyreans began their slumber, the land shifted, and this temple was swallowed by the sea. Scholars were able to prove that the sand and the heavy stones formed an airtight seal around the structure. Later, people carved an undersea tunnel to connect to the temple, bringing it to its current state. Now that you mention it, I think I read that book too. Revised theories on ancient architecture, right? That's the one. Have you read it, Aizen? No, I only read the first edition. The problem with the stone enclosure theory is that each time you expand the enclosure, the innermost stones have to be carried out. Once that was pointed out as being too inefficient, alternate theories were developed. The revised edition has a number of competing theories. I highly recommend reading it. Uh, I will then. So, wait, was that a complete rebuttal of Aizen's explanation? Th that was not my intention. Ah, uh, it's okay. Archaeology is a continuous process of asking new questions and making new discoveries. Prevailing theories change all the time. What's it matter anyway? Let's just get going. There's no Empyrean here, right, Aizen? If you're worried about it, why not flip that coin of his? Heads, no Empyrean. Tails, Empyrean Central. But it always comes up tails! Like I said before, these temples are nothing more than places of worship built by human hands. The current religion started when humans, fearful of natural forces, began to worship four gods they called the Empyreans. If you're concerned about whether or not one is sleeping in these ruins, just remember that their very existence is only legend. Be that as it may, Enomenot certainly exists. Aye. But I've never heard a single story of anyone actually seeing an Empyrean. Inominat must be a special case, then. Must be. I suppose so. If there were four more like him, and they were all trying to stop us, we'd be sunk. I can't disagree. Well, it wiped out the security for us, but... <sighs> Well, look at that. Wolfie's got the crest of Amenoch, the same pendant worn by priestesses. Then that makes this demon... Yeah, she must be the missing mother, Mahina. Her village 
would become a demon. Eleanor? She's never going to be the same again. This is the least I can do for her. So says Reason. Huh? That feeling! <laughs> Damn! <sighs> Let the demon be. We don't need it. Demon. I guess she caught demon blight when she was looking for her daughter. Yeah, that's what the girl at the inn said. But even after turning into a demon, she's still searching for her daughter. Well, Rokuro, Kurogane, and Dial all remember what they wanted when they were human, right? Demon or not, she's a mother. It's no surprise she would still be protective of her child. It could be that. Or it could be something else. Well, I hope that's what it is. I know that must be how she felt as a human, but demons don't have a sense of motherhood or any such thing. You saw how violent she was. She's not Mahina anymore. When she became a demon, she lost all capacity for empathy and love. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. Velvet and Rokuro still have empathy. One demon left unchecked could take a hundred lives, and this one's even willing to attack exorcists. Demons can wipe out entire villages, even cities, just as they destroyed my village. Uh. Thus, my path is clear. Eleanor is right. There's no turning back once you've changed. Perhaps it would be a mercy to grant her peace through death. Uh. Is Inomi not really an Empyrean? What makes you ask that all of a sudden? Well, according to the song Grimm deciphered, Inominat is an eight-headed dragon, right? The Empyreans are supposed to be these holy beings, but using Therians to feed on malevolence sounds more sinister than divine to me. You've got a point there. Empyreans are a type of Malachim, and that doesn't seem like any Malak we've seen. And even less so when we're talking an eight-headed dragon. Is it so far-fetched? What do you think will happen if the Therians come together in one place? Well, it wouldn't be good. My guess is they'd merge together into a giant, horrific monster. The mighty beast will attack us with its eight long, snake-like necks and eight heads spitting hellfire! Uh. I can see your worry. Right? And that's eight heads with only six of us to take them on. It'd be more than we could handle. I'd have to conjure up a double or two. You can do that? Of course not. Then why mention it? Oh! What is it, Lafayette? said? Do you think each head would act of its own free will? Because if they do, they'd be uncoordinated, bumping into each other and going this way and that, giving us an opening. If we fight as one united whole, I know we can win. Yes, if we work hand in hand, victory is ours. Right, everyone? Huh? Us united? Have you looked at us recently? Uh... Well, I mean, maybe... <laughs> well, there you are. Again. Looks like we were right. Another Therian. Just as Velvet conjectured, each of the seven heads seems to assume a different form. The sensation! It was here! Well, look at that. I guess your hunch panned out too, kiddo. This is just how I felt in Ward Forest. That must have been an Earth Pulse point back there too. Well, what are we going to do with this one? Can we get it to shrink like that bug of yours? I don't care whether it lives or dies. As long as we defeat it and take out one of Inominat's heads, 
That's all that matters. Try not to let it eat you. That'd be very uncomfortable. Crimson I don't think this Therian's getting any smaller. <gasps> the demon again!
<laughs> Mommy. Mommy. Look! It turned into a little girl! Is that... Kamoana? Mommy, why? Why did you leave me all alone? <laughs> did I do something wrong? Was I too weak? I'm sorry, Mommy. I'm sorry. No. This can't be happening. I tried so hard to be strong for you, Mommy. The man from the Abbey made me strong. <laughs> so please, Mommy. Please come back. The Abbey made her strong? By turning her into a Therian? Jeez, those happy jokers really get off on this sacrifice stuff, don't they? I can't believe it. That... that woman... She was trying to save her own daughter. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! I miss you. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Dying, unable to save her daughter. All she could do was offer herself to feed her hungry child. No, this... this is my fault! So, should we bring her with us? Someone like her will only slow us down. That Therian isn't going anywhere! Oscar, what is the Abbey doing? Please tell me, I have to know! Eleanor, the less you know, the better. I must know! I killed her mother, and then the poor girl, she... Ah, so she must have devoured the demon. But don't let that trouble you. The demon was a necessary sacrifice to bring an end to this world's pain and suffering. It wasn't just some demon! She was a mother! She was all this girl had! Her one and only mother! Be that as it may, those who possess strong wings must... <sighs> it's not nice to make a girl cry. <laughs> Kamawana. It's now or never. Out of the way, Lafayette. Wait! Have you no compassion? This isn't up for discussion. I thought you just wanted to weaken Inominat! You can sever the link! You don't have to kill her! had a change of heart. Apparently, a woman's tears truly do have frightening power. I'm just curious about something Grimoire said. I can always kill this one later. If we're taking her with us, we'd better grab her and go. No sense lingering in the enemy's territory. Hey, Kamawana. My name's Lafayette. Do you want to come with me and my friends and get out of here? Where's my mommy? I'll be lonely without her. You're not alone, sweetie. I promise. Even if she's far away, your mother will always be looking over you. How do you know? Because... That's what my mother does for me, too. Let's go, Kamawana. Okay.
Good. The malevolence is getting stronger. My, my. The effects are already starting to show. Grim, what's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? <laughs> the hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Demon Blight! Even the Inn Girl! Why is this happening? They're demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence. All of that energy spilling from their bodies. That's what causes the demon blight? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far! Track them down at all costs! We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. Where are we going? Where's my mom? Kamalana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. All right. You're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans, for their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight, does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? 
Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <sighs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realize this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then... On the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to Anominat. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse point... Clever boy! That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? Hey, what's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you, too, you know. Uh, yeah, so she is. Thank you, Kamoana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malakim experience emotions too. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Moloch turn into a demon. 
That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Moloch, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette. That must be what Eisen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those Class 4 islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. Place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered and her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk as soon as she hit open water. Hmm. Sounds like whatever's there is as smart and manipulative as it is vicious. Sounds like. Later I heard some talk about how several exorcists had gotten killed on that island. If you plan on going, you'd best be very cautious. Sir, we just received a Sylph J from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logress. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logress. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! 